Thank you all for coming to Brazil. Yes, Plato's scholarship is heading south these days. <laughs> With a few notable exceptions, my friends from Argentina and David Runia, who came all the way from Melbourne. So they are the only ones who headed north to come here. Welcome to the 11th Symposium Platonicum, the first IPS symposium to be held in the Southern Hemisphere. It's a big deal, you know. <laughs> and the IPS has, be, has been constantly broadening this commitment to internationalize itself. And the symposium is probably a landmark for all of us. A very special welcome also to those who are joining us by live stream. As you know, Plato had some problem with images, screens, fantasiae, and I sincerely hope this broadcasting we are trying will work, well, will work for you out there in this cyberland, where, wherever you are. I am Gabriele Cornelli, and I'm the president of the International Plato Society. I'm also very proud to be professor of ancient philosophy and director of the Archai UNESCO chair here at the University of Brasilia. And I'm delighted to say this event is being hosted by this University of Brasilia. And that's why I should introduce right now to you my colleagues at this very important table. So we'll have Tom Robinson, Vice President of the International Plate Society. Rodolfo Lopez, which is a vice president of the Brazilian Organizing Committee and ancient philosophy professor here with me. <laughs> Fabio Eon, who is representing one of our supporting bodies, which is UNESCO, representative UNESCO in Brazil. Thank you, Fabio. <laughs> I'm especially delighted to have with us Kyriakos Amiridis, which is the ambassador of Greece in Brazil. And of course, Ivan Camargo, the very president of the University of Brasilia. Um, it's okay, I was trying to find some friends, okay. So thank you all for being here. Speaking of being here, you have probably noticed one very important non-attendance at this table, the one of Francisco Bravo, my fellow co-president, who unfortunately couldn't make it. His health condition is sound, but his family and his doctor have advised him against this long trip. So I'm personally very sorry you are not here, Francisco, and I'm sure we are going to miss you. Back in Tokyo, 2010, I've seen Noburo Notomi here with us, when we offered our candidacy to host the 2016 symposium here in Brasilia, we also proposed the FIDO as the dialogue which would like everyone to study together in this occasion. Back then, I did not have before my mind the famous story told by Favorinus, you will probably remember it very well, how Plato himself was given a public reading of the Fido in the academy, and Aristotle was the only one who stayed until the end. <laughs> All the others had left beforehand. Not the easy dialogues to study, clearly. I believe all of you are quite aware of this, and I sincerely hope you won't be tempted to leave our readings in the middle of the symposium. Let's all be a little Aristotelian on this one. Just for this one, okay? As part of our programming, we made the decision to pay respect to the memory of the late Samuel Skornikov, former president of the International Pet Society, who died, you know, two years ago. And we decided to dedicate to him the PhD session to his memory. Possibly not everybody knows that Samuel was born in Brazil, in Porto Alegre, in 1958. And then, moved to, uh, no, uh, and then moved to Brazil, uh, to Israel in 1958. So we find Samuel like one of us, in a way. We hope you will love Brazilian, 
after all. And that you could, in a way, feel yourself at home here. I believe this is a very special reason, there is a very special reason why a classicist could feel him or herself at home here in Brazilian. And for that I would like to quote a few lines on the Greekness of the modernist city of Brasilia, written by the renowned Portuguese poetess Sofia de Mello Andresen. That's the quote. Designed by Lucio Costa, Nehemiah and Pythagoras, logical and lyrical, Greek and Brazilian, ecumenical, proposing to people of all races the universal essence of the just forms. Brasilia naked and lunar, Athena made rise her city of cement and glass. Athena made rise her city as order and clear as a thought. And the skyscrapers have the delicate fineness of a coconut palm. That's why I believe, now I'm talking with you, behind a fantastic city tour, to be held in English and Portuguese on Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon to 2.30. We will be taking you to the National Museum today for a special visitation. They open it for just us. And also to the Greek Embassy, where else we could be. Thanks to the generosity and hospitality of our beloved Ambassador Kyriakos Amiridis. We want to show you how ancient and how Greek the futuristic Brasilia can be. We are also very proud to put on a very special event. A concert will be offered to us, to the International Bread Society, by the Symphonic Orchestra of the National Museum, uh, National Theatre, sorry, tomorrow night, here at the University of Brasilia. Music and Plato, what more perfect combination, I would say. At the risk of taking too much, let me add here a few more thank yous that really must be offered. First of all, to the IPS Executive Committee, who served over the past three years with exceptional dedication and great generosity. Among them, I should probably give a special credit to Professor Olivier Renaud, who helped to build up and manage our outstanding new website. Thank you, Olivier. Secondly, to the University of Brasilia and the three Brazilian funds agencies, CAPES, CNPK, and especially our Federal District Research Funding Agency, which has been extremely generous with us. Thirdly, I note, with thanks, the support we continue to receive uh, from the De Vogel Foundation, from UNESCO, from Brazilian Plate Society, and from the postgraduate program in metaphysics of the University of Brasilia, between other many supporting bodies. Lastly, lastly and all importantly, let me thank our great team, our great staff of helpers, without whom the conference could never have been organized. Let me express my deepest gratitude here to each one of the members of the Brasilia Organizing Committee, especially the Archive UNESCO Chair, faculty and alumni, who were unsparing in their efforts over the last month to take care of the all myriad details necessary to make this meeting possible. You can't <laughs> you can spot them with the dark badge they wear, like my own. Thank you all of you then. One last thing, as you have probably noticed, this is a very sunny, but also a dramatically dry season in Brasilia. So please don't forget one thing, to drink, drink a lot. And be sure, if I may say so, that some of what you drink is actually water. <laughs> Let me give the floor right now to our beloved Vice President of the International Plate Society, Tom Robinson. Can you all hear me? Good. Well, uh, let me uh, echo the president and uh, offer my warm welcome uh, here to Brasilia. It may seem strange that 
I'm offering a welcome when in fact I'm not Brazilian, I'm Canadian. But I feel absolutely at home in this country and I have felt at home here. I, I feel almost Brazilian uh, in saying welcome to Brazilio. And of course, uh, sitting here, I can't help thinking of the life of our own society because I'm one of the very few who were sitting down one day having a drink in Mexico City. Conrado Egerslan was there, Christopher Rowe, Livio Rossetti, Nicole Ohms, who was here. And that was the time when out of nowhere we said, well, look, there's an Aristotelian society in the world, very successful, very important. How come there's no Plato society? And it happened just like that. We decided it will happen. And Livio Rossetti, who unfortunately isn't here this time, Livio said, I'll do it. I'll organize it myself and Italy will be the place where the society formally starts to fly in Bavania. So that's a very uh, happy memory for me and it's simply wonderful to feel that I'm some sort of fil conducteur getting us from point A to whatever we are now, point B. Anyway, I just want to pick up for a couple of seconds on, on what uh, the President was saying about the, the growing internationalization of our society. As you'll recollect, at the very beginning, we decided that it would be a society which was international, certainly in terms of its languages, at least, uh, uh, with a European base. There were five languages. And we've tried very hard to stick to that, and it makes us very, very different uh, in that uh, we hope it's not entirely dominated by any one language. We try to avoid that if we can. However, it ha is, has been the case, generally speaking, that we've operated most of the time, with a couple of exceptions, in what you might call the Anglo-American and the European sphere. Uh, but even from very early times, it was obvious to me in particular that the Japanese contingent that was coming from the very, very early years were profoundly committed to platonic studies. And I remember urging them constantly, we must meet sometime in Japan. And it did happen. And of course, under Samuel Skolnikov, we met in Israel as well. So from fairly early on, there was a move uh, into a broader, broader sphere. And so what I wanted to mention to you is that uh, I myself have had the great good fortune over the last 10 to 15 years to do a lot of traveling uh, around the world talking about Plato. And not least in uh, China and in Russia, and especially in those two in the last 10 years. And things are happening. And this may be the two new areas into which we might venture, where there's a great deal of interest in us if we're prepared to show interest in them. For example, I've spent a lot of time in St. Petersburg and in Moscow and uh, once in Novosibirsk. And I've been very impressed by the activity uh, in ancient studies, but not least in platonic studies there. I'm thinking of Professor Roman Zvetlov, for example, in St. Petersburg, Professor Irina Protopopov in Moscow and others. It's an interesting world, the world of Russian Platonism. I mean, it goes back to the time of St. Cyril and Methodius who brought Christianity to Russia and they brought with it a version of Platonism, a Platonism, if you like, filtered through the early Greek fathers. So that's what the Russians were introduced to. And it still very much colors their, their Plato studies. So it's different. And if the Russians did join our concilium, we'd hear quite a lot about this particular tangent on Plato. And I hope that as a result, there'd be a fair amount of mutual learning. So unfortunately, Professor Zvetlov, who had expected to be here, couldn't get here. It's unfortunate at the last moment. So let me just, in a sense, speak for him, saying that he, in particular, is profoundly interested in a link between the Russian Plato Society and our own. He himself personally has already joined our society. And uh, certainly it's my hope and expectation that this will be uh, perhaps the next adventure for our society, the Russian adventure. 
And the same with China. I've spent a lot of time in recent years in many places in China and have been really quite astonished. I went there in a state of sheer ignorance. And what I learned was that in the Orient, both Japan and China, what has happened is that the Christian missionaries, not least the Jesuits, left behind them little schools, little hum well, humanity schools in effect, uh, where Western thinking, along with Chinese thinking, was taught. And there was a good deal of philosophy, a good deal of Plato and Aristotle. And the bizarre result is that in these mega universities, huge places in China, which are largely, of course, technological, as you might expect, a great deal of engineering, a great deal of hard sciences, and so on. Amazingly, right in the middle of these monster universities is a little humanistic core. And the little humanistic core is born of a tiny little Christian school left behind by the missionaries. And so if you look around, you will discover in these major institutions people who know Greek and Latin very well, who teach it, many of whom have absolutely excellent students, not least in Peking University, um, know a good deal about Plato and Aristotle. And as I say, I've got to meet a lot of the teachers, a lot of the students, and have been very impressed. And I think that that, though it might be more long-term, this might be, say, 10 years into the future, I think that might be, in a sense, our, our final frontier. I'm thinking specifically of scholars in Peking University, which is, if you like, the Harvard of China, Renmin University, where I, I gave a series of lectures. Now that, ironically, was the first university founded by Mao Zedong after the revolution. And one might guess, well, if it was founded Mao Zedong, it would be very much a social studies university. It would be a hard sciences university. It is that, but it also has a humanities uh, content and I was astonished at the quality of the teaching of Plato in that particular university and at the quality of the students. There's the Foreign Languages University of Beijing again with, with great commitments uh, to the teaching of Plato and another excellent one in the south, the Sun Yat-sen University in Guangzhou. So I'm betting that we will hear from them fairly soon and that one day they too will be part of our concilium. At least I for one hope so. Uh, so there are a few passing thoughts, uh, picking up on what the president said about in internationalization. So, thank you for listening to that. Thank you, Tom. I would like to give the floor to Rodolfo Lopez, please. Hello, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to Brasilia, welcome to our symposium, welcome to the Brasilia, to University of Brasilia. Um, <coughs> first of all, I must highlight the importance of this event to our university, uh, especially to our research center, the Archai UNESCO chair that Gabriele mentioned, and also to our newborn postgraduate program in metaphysics. <coughs> You may imagine what it means to us uh, to have you, to have here, uh, I may say, la crème de la crème of platonic scholarship. Um, <coughs> so in the name of our uh, academic community, I deeply thank you for being here. Uh, and of course, I must thank Gabriele for <laughs> making this possible. It's a great, great honor to us having you here. Um, now, I'll give you some tips and tricks about Brasilia, which is a very particular city. Uh, so we, Brasilienses, which means we who live here in Brasilia, are used to talk, uh, I used, we are used to say uh, that we have a, also a tripartite structure. We have a head, body, and wheels, not legs. Uh, so it, it means you can't really walk here in Brasilia uh, because of the long distances, I'm serious. Uh, <laughs> that's why we have provided buses for all the participants uh, to join the various uh, event activities, of course. 
Uh, we suggest also if you want to go somewhere to get a cab, a taxi, or a Uber. We prefer Uber, actually, uh, to move around the city. Um, about your uh, conference kit, um, <coughs> as you may have noticed, uh, we uh, gave a conference bag to, to the participants. It's a recycled bag, uh, I should add. Uh, the reason why is explained on a tag you will find enclosed in each bag. Inside the bag there is a small tag that explains the, the origin of, of, of this bag. Uh, you, also of, you, will, you will also find it. A small book contained the full program of the conference, along with a short program uh, containing some items of practical information. Uh, <clears throat> if you have any additional information that you need, please do tell us. We are uh, always ready to, to answer your questions. Um, you will also find this, which is a small gift from us. Um, <clears throat> so it's a coaster, as, as you see, it's a coaster, uh, which reproduces a ceramic panel made exclusively for the University of Brasilia by the famous uh, Brazilian artist Atos Bulcão. Uh, those of you who bought the city tour on Wednesday and the conference dinner <coughs> on Thursday will also find the tickets for both in your conference bag inside a small envelope. Um, there are still some few places uh, for each available uh, for city tour and conference dinner. If you wish to book some of them or both, please do it. Uh, today before 1 p.m. Uh, to allow us to make uh, the final arrangements, of course. So, finally, as you already noticed, uh, uh, our, our uh, event is paper-free, almost paper-free. Uh, the executive committee of the IPS made this decision back in Pisa, <coughs> uh, which means that the papers have not been printed in the usual two or three volumes of papers. Uh, but they are available online on our website uh, for registered members, of course. Uh, and the collection of all the papers, a book of papers, uh, was sent uh, to you by email. Uh, so you will have access to, to all papers. And I guess that's it. Thank you very much and I wish you a great uh, symposium platonic, everyone. I would like to invite Fabio Eon, representing UNESCO, to give a few words. Thank you, Fabio. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm here representing UNESCO, as you may know, is one of the oldest UN agencies in the world. It was created in 1945, just after the trauma of the Second War and, and Holocaust. And uh, when UNESCO was created, in uh, its first article of the Constitution, there was a particular phrase which later on became the motto of UNESCO, which said, if it's in the minds of men that wars are created, it's in the minds of men that we should seek for peace. This later on became the motto of UNESCO and the inspiration of UNESCO to uh, develop a series of programs and activities which for obvious reasons had philosophy as a key driver or a powerful tool. Uh, later on, uh, in this strong belief on humanism and uh, Greek values, uh, I, I should say, because if we take, for instance, the logo of UNESCO, it, it has a clear inspiration of uh, the, the Greek Parthenon, so there's a, a lot of symbolism there. So later on, UNESCO in the 80s has created a very powerful program called UNITWIN, which was a program that was uh, uh, designed to uh, develop partnerships with higher education institutions. Uh, now we have uh, 800 UNESCO chairs in the world in, the, in a series of topics, all of them related to the UNESCO field of mandate. So you see in uh, every country you, you have uh, a UNESCO chair on education, on, bi on bioethics, on human rights. And here in Brazil, in this very university, we are very lucky to have three UNESCO chairs. One in bioethics, one in distance education, and one in philosophy and classical studies, which is brilliantly chaired by our colleague, uh, uh, Gabriele Corneli. 
So uh, for us, uh, speaking on behalf of uh, the whole UNESCO team in Brazil, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, we are very proud of the relationship we have with Gabriele, with uh, his whole team. Uh, as a human being, I had the chance to be in touch with uh, the work of Plato twice in my life as a child, because I was fortunate to have a mother which was a philosophy teacher. So I was, I was lucky enough to, to read Plato's work uh, since the very early ages. And then as a student in this very university as a political scientist, when uh, I had to read again the work of Plato and uh, I saw how relevant it was and how actual it was. So uh, uh, Professor Ivan Camargo, Professor Gabrielli, I'm very proud to be here. Uh, I thank you very much for this invitation and I wish you all who came from very uh, long and uh, all, com all countries that we rep you represent here uh, a very uh, fruitful work and uh, a very productive week. Welcome. Dear Ambassador Kiriou Kusamiridis, I would like to have a few words from you. Uh, Mr. Rector, dear professors, um, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me here. I welcome uh, all of you in Brasilia as well. And uh, I would like to express my gratitude for uh, what you are uh, doing in preserving for the humanity this uh, uh, platonic studies, which especially during uh, our um, uh, complicated period, we, I mean, the whole humanity is passing, it's very, very important to remind people of uh, the humanistic studies and of the didactic uh, principles of uh, the ancient Greek philosophers, especially Platon. Uh, I promised Professor Gabrielli not to speak you in, uh, in ancient Greek or in modern Greek, but uh, um, in any case, uh, um, as we are in Brasilia, I would like to stress the fact that uh, uh, I feel in a certain extent like being in, uh, in Athens here because most probably if the Greek, uh, these famous Greek architects of the classical time were born today, they would eventually build uh, Parthenon and the other, uh, you know, well-known buildings we have in the stadiums in the, in the, I mean, in the way that Brasilia is, uh, was, was designed by this new uh, very famous architects like uh, Costa and uh, Niemeyer. So uh, I would like to express my gratitude once more. Uh, it's uh, what you are doing uh, 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 really reflects to eternity because uh, humanistic studies are eternal and uh, they always offer to human beings very important uh, uh, way of uh, thinking, of uh, behaving, and of uh, being more uh, human. So thank you very much once again, and uh, have uh, success to your works. Thank you. And now to close this uh, opening session, I will, I'm very proud that our president of the University of Brasilia is here with us right now. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Gabrielli. Thank you all here. Uh, it's a great pleasure to open this meeting here in Brazil University. I hope you all have a very good time here in Brasilia. As Gabrielli said, it, d it does not rain in Brasilia during the month of July. So, uh, and we have a very, very, very good, beautiful sky, birds, and trees. I would like to thank you, Gabriele, for this force of internationalization of our university. And thank you, you all for coming. Welcome to Brazil University and have a good work. Thank you. Well, with this comes to the end of this opening ceremony. I would like to thank all of you again for being with us. And we should start in five minutes our first session. Thank you.